Hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Stetarguskash, Honey Stoker, where we can see the fortress dwarves are currently in a state of frantic activity, as they have been for a number of months now. You see, recently the fortress has been a place of great and terrifying changes. Changes that will greatly affect the future of the dwarven nation. The dwarves that live here have transformed into vampires, terrifying blood-sucking undead creatures who no longer fear time's arrow, but for better or worse, remains to be seen. Although one thing is certain, the path of the Dwarven Nation has changed immensely. But take note that not all of the Dwarves have made the transformation into vampires. Id Yurisvath Sith has chosen to not drink from the goblin-tainted well and as such has retained his mortality, though this might end up being a fool's errand in a fortress full of blood-sucking vampires. It is Id's belief that the only possible future for the dwarves is a future lived as a dwarf, not a vampire. In addition, a second dwarf, his wife, Mafal, has also abstained from drinking out of the well. However, it wasn't strictly her choice. Having been infected by the werehorse taint many years ago, she remains locked up here, in her prison, from which she watches, as the fortress she once loved contorts itself into new and vile shapes. Aside from those two, Honeystoker now has a human resident, Mezim Ratad Pibang, a renowned treasure hunter and citizen of the Confederacy of Singing, a nearby human civilization. Only the gods could say for sure why Mazum chose such an unfortunate time to live in Small Honeystoker, but if the treasure she seeks is anything other than a quick death, then our treasure hunting friend might just well be out of luck. But seemingly doomed treasure hunters aren't the only new faces here in Honeystoker, although this is a dwarf who's been here in the fortress before. The dwarf we see here's name is Domas, Domas Morol Midor, Page Power a former drunk, who was living in a dwarven hillox nearby. Domas made the move to Honeystoker several months ago, alongside a longtime companion of his, and has since been trying to find a place for himself in the fortress amongst his new vampiric brethren. A difficult road surely lies ahead for this dwarf, unless, that is, he too makes the change, as his traveling companion has already done. His traveling companion? The former benefactor of Honeystoker, and the being solely responsible for its creation, the wild boar man Moses Stizashragoth. Yes, at long last, the wild boar man has chosen to live here, in the fortress that he helped to create. A joyous thing it is for the vampires of Stetarguskash, and for Moses as well. For quite a number of years, no dwarf knew what to make of this secretive wild boar man. Communication was always sparse, and aside from that it seemed he was always scheming, coming up with new tricks. It made trusting his motives difficult. But as his plans were slowly revealed, and the dwarves began to accept the idea of becoming powerful undead creatures, the view of the wild boar man began to change. And with the success of his tainted well plans, the dwarves have seemingly become enamored with Moses a sentiment that has grown much stronger in the short time that Moses has been here in Honeystoker. For most dwarves, anyways. Upon his arrival in Honeystoker, Moses was quick to explain his recent lack of communication. As it turned out, Moses and Domas had undertaken a quest. The last word that Moses received from the dwarves was that the plans for a vampire well had failed and that the already small population was dwindling. And so Moses and Domas chose to undertake a mission to spread the good word of Honeystoker. The two set out and traveled from hillox to hillox, spreading word about the small fortress and the noble dwarves who lived therein. The task must have been arduous, but was done as an act of good faith to the dwarves of Honeystoker. According to the wild boar man, a great weight pressed against his soul. His plans had failed, and the dwarves' dreams were crushed, and so in his guilt, the quest was undertaken as a last, desperate way to aid the dwarves. Upon hearing this, the vampires began to realize how much the quest had already helped them, 
new waves of migrants had steadily been arriving in the fortress, and already their dwindling population had begun to recover. But for how pleased the dwarves were, their joy could not hold a candle to Moses' own. Looking around the brownstone fortress, he began to realize that the well had worked after all. And so now that Honeystoker had a way to generate new vampires, and considering the fact that a massive influx of new migrants were on its way, it seemed that everything was finally coming together, both for the dwarves and for Moses. <sighs> okay, another long intro there. Sorry about that, but I had some explaining to do, and yet some more before I unpause the game. So remain buckled in. As I had just said, most of the dwarves in the fortress are vampires right now, except for a couple, those being Id, Mafal, Mesum, and Domas. Now that creates a bit of a problem for us, because a couple of these individuals, Mesum and Domas, aren't actually citizens of the fortress quite yet, and currently they act more like merchants, until they petition for citizenship. You may have noticed that during the intro, Domas fell asleep in this temple here, and I was quick to lock the doors so no vampires could get in. That was pretty lucky, because if I didn't do that in time, I think he probably would have been sucked dry. Now the plan with Id, who doesn't want to be a vampire, is to just lock the door whenever he goes to bed. And that's going to be kind of a big pain in the ass, but it should be doable. I'm just going to have to keep on my toes. But because Domas and Mesum aren't actually citizens in the fortress, then they can't be assigned bedrooms, and therefore won't go to a bed to go to sleep. So I'm not too sure what we could even do about that really. I guess I could attempt to set up a dormitory, and hopefully they'll just wander there to sleep. But if they ever decide to just fall asleep in one of the hallways, then they're going to be dead meat. No two ways about it, really. And so for now, I'm going to make a little dormitory room down here in the second level of the residential quarter, and we'll give this a try, I guess. Although I'm still going to be keeping a very close eye on them. Oh, and actually, if you look down over here, uh, you can see another bedroom I'm planning up. And I'm hoping to make this into Id's bedroom. And you'll notice this long corridor that leads to it. I think I could put a pressure plate in the hallway and link that pressure plate up to a bridge and make it so that whenever he heads down this hall to go to sleep, he'll step on that pressure plate, which will then close the bridge. Now, I've really never tried anything like this before, and so I don't really know what to expect, but I have high hopes. Back to the subject of citizens without rooms. The same goes for Moses, who you can see over here. He is not yet an official citizen, but as I've seen in the past, sometimes these adventurers that retire in dwarven fortresses like this one here will eventually petition for citizenship. I don't know what causes it, and it could very well take a while, possibly years, or it may never happen. I don't know. But for now, he doesn't have a room either, and so it's going to be difficult to keep him happy, I'm thinking. And as you can see, he's already pretty upset. I could really use a good meal. I'm dejected. <laughs> Which mostly seems attributed to his lack of decent meals recently, as well as being unable to practice a craft. And there's a couple other things in there as well, but I'm not sure there's much we could do about that for now. Although I'm thinking that most of these things are due to the quest that he had just finished up. And yes, if you were wondering, before last episode, I had again taken control of Moses and traveled around to a bunch of different dwarven hillocks. And all I basically did was introduce myself to the dwarves there, which seems to have really done the trick. I'm sure that is why we've been receiving migrant waves again. And actually, something else I noticed as well. If we have a look at the world map here, you can see that at least in Fainted Gravel over here, there are a ton of dwarves that we can now ask to come to the fortress. Like there are 58 that we can ask for at this one hillix right here and many more at the others. Very exciting, it looks like our days of a low population are about to end, but I'm not gonna ask for any more dwarves just yet. Back to Moses over here, and yes, I'm going to be keeping a pause through this little part right here, just until we figure out how these vampires work exactly. Bear with me. Anyways, Moses. Now, the dwarves are basically in love with this guy now. Seeing him come through the gates like that, talking about this grand quest that he had just embarked on, really reinvigorated the dwarves' love for the guy. On top of that fact, much to add to your chagrin, he does not seem to have any interest at all in living in these quartzite chambers down here. Not that she'd be able to successfully trap him in here anymore. No, the vampires are just too in love with the guy, seemingly. They wouldn't want something like that at all. And so it looks like these chambers will have to be repurposed. Damn shame. Oh well. But yeah, I'd really like to think his refusal of the quartzite chambers and his desire to live here amongst his citizens has even further increased his popularity amongst the vampires. And on top of that even, bearing in mind that we do have a ton of wild boars here, and the fact that we lost our beloved animal trainer last episode, Moses has stepped in and has given us some very helpful tips on how to properly train a wild boar, which is extremely thrilling. 
Now, what I mean by that is that I had actually gone in, and I don't normally do this at all, ever, but I had modded the game ever so slightly to make wild boars trainable for war, which means that now we can have an animal trainer come and actually train up these wild boars for the purpose of fighting, and I believe we can even assign them to our soldiers, and I think it should work anyways. I believe so. As you can see, we can come in this animal list here now, and I can select the wild boars to be trained for war. Just like that. Now, as you know, I do tend to like to keep my Dwarf Fortress experience vanilla in flavor, but the thought of a wild boar trained specifically for war was a bit too enticing for me to resist. On top of that, I didn't think it was too far-fetched for a fantasy setting, especially considering the whole wild boar overlord thing, you know? And of course, these training tips have further increased his popularity amongst the vampires. I'll tell you this, Moses, he's a true hero. But that is not all. No. Because Moses has some big plans for little Stetargus Gosh. Most notably, the Tower of Memories over here. Which we're hoping at some point can be big enough to house all of the dwarves in the fortress. I mean, how cool would that be? Enormous towers filled with vampires. Yeah, definitely. That's going to be a thing of beauty, I'm telling you. But it does still have a ways to go. Because now the towers are continuing down underground as well. Down, down, down. To this level here where you can see those three outer towers are connected with this winding tunnel. Pretty neat, right? It's coming along and we don't have any firm, firm plans, as for meeting halls and additional living spaces and such, but if we look down this way, we have a little bit of a contraption planned up. A little bit. Now our original entry hall over here that leads down to the fortress pit, well, you know, doesn't really quite cut the mustard. Kind of bare bones, basic, you know? And so this new one here is going to lead to the Tower of Memories down underground, and will be attached to the surface through ramps over this way. Now this bridge here, well, we have some plans, some fairly complex plans, that will be explained in due time. Just let it be known that it would not be possible without testing done in Waterkeeper. We'll touch back on this after it's developed a bit. Alright, um, whew, is that all the explaining we have to do? I sure hope so. <laughs> okay, let's unpause the game and see how a vampire fortress runs. And here we go, okay. Let's just remain wary. Boy, it is going to be a huge pain keeping an eye on these dwarves, I'm telling you. I can tell right now. But no matter. You gotta do what you gotta do. Oh, you know, I just realized I forgot to mention that the human who's now living in the fortress, well, they're here because I took control of Moses and moved him to the fortress and then resumed play in fortress mode. And when I came back, the human was here. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure why they're here exactly, but they're here now. Just a heads up. Anyways. All right, taking a look at our wild boar pen over here, and I can see a couple of wild boars that are trained for war now. Oh, that is very exciting. Luckily, two of the new migrants, Doran and Stodier, are animal trainers, and so they're the ones doing the job, overseen by Moses, I'd assume. Oh my goodness, would you look at this? Down in our meeting hall, we have eight dwarves singing, and they're singing this song, The Sun Sets on Principle which is very interesting. They're all kind of just pressed up against these statues down here at the far end. And another interesting note is that <laughs> they are all merchants. And so that would explain why they're not doing any important work. Well, you know, it is good to see that the dwarves can still entertain themselves, even though they're now undead monsters. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Perhaps they're trying to summon the rest of the vampires to the meeting hall right now. I just realized it's the 13th of Limestone, early autumn. And damn it, I would love to get some work done, but eh, we do need our downtime too. And so let's begin the Autumn Festival. Yep, there we go. Everyone make your way to the meeting hall. The time has come to reap the benefits of the year. Oh, uh, here's something. I think. Uh, Moses over here is handling a Kia currently, bringing it to a pasture somewhere. But he's flashing yellow, which means he's wounded. And I don't think he was doing that before. There hasn't been any combat. Let's uh, have a look at the guy. My goals are important to me. No physical wounds, seemingly. Although in his status, it says he's faint. More than a little worrisome. I don't know why the hell that would be. Um, hmm. Okay, well, yeah, I'm not too sure. I'll come on down to the meeting hall and just try to unwind a bit. I'm going to be watching this very carefully. Oh, speaking of things that we're watching carefully, it looks like it over here is attempting to go to bed as we speak. Alright, let's see. It looks like he's on his way to his bedroom. There he is, and he's sleeping, and I want to see what the vampires do. Just playing it step by step. And, well, it doesn't look like anybody's heading for him right now. Oh, well, actually, it looks like this one's going straight for him. Well, would you look at that? It's Moldaf. 
You rat bastard. I don't think so. Let's get this door locked up. There we go. Oof, yeah, it's gonna be a big pain in the butt to keep those dwarves safe, I'll tell ya. Anyways, off with you, Moldaf. There's nothing for you here. Now let's see, back down here in the meeting hall. And Moses is down here now. Good to see. Still flashing yellow. Not good. I feel so tired of everything. Mm. Yeah, in fact, he is still faint. Alright. Just to wish there was something we could do. I mean, I'm sure he's not gonna die or anything, right? Just a little faint for some mysterious reason. Nothing to be worried about. And yet here I am. Oh, and something else here. It looks like that human metalsmith and a Domas are heading to sleep now. And it does look like they're actually traveling, which is good news. Yeah, all right, it looks like they are going for the dormitory. Fantastic. Okay, so maybe we can make a dormitory with, uh oh, oh no. Oh no, 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 okay. Um, problem. Big problem. Uh, there's a cabinet here in the doorway now, so now I can't lock the door. And there is a vampire bearing down on them, seemingly. Um, maybe if I take this area here out of the Autumn Festival zone, then maybe the vampires will honor that? Maybe? Let's see. Uh, just doing it step by step now, and uh, does not look to be the case. Assuming this dwarf is heading for them, and it does not appear to be. Okay. Uh, okay, it looks like Mesm left the dormitory in order to sleep out in the hallway now, because it's no longer part of the Autumn Festival zone. Damn it. And we have yet another vampire approaching. Although it says they're heading to detail a floor over this way here, so I'm hoping they just pass by. Okay, and they do seem to be. Good. Unpausing. Yeah, okay, they're just heading on their way. Okay, get rested up, you guys. There you go. Just rest and then wake up. Okay, we have more vampires moving in. Ugh, and this one here is Saral. One of the three tower dwarves and one who murdered three people before. I guess I'll just keep toying around with bros. And yeah, that seemed to do the trick. Seems... Oh, oh, all right, yeah. It looks like vampires do honor burrows, which is pretty fantastic. It looks like you guys lucked out today, I'll tell ya. All right, now we're back over here in the meeting hall, and it seems like everyone's enjoying themselves for the most part, except for Moses, who is still flashing yellow. All right, I'm gonna level with you. I don't know what the hell this is, at all. And frankly, it's terrifying, but I guess as long as it's not progressing farther, then that's good. There is no room for mercy in this world. And it's still saying he's faint. Also take note that he has no evaluated wounds, treatments, or a medical history even. So this is totally baffling. Yeah, it just doesn't make much sense. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, I just unpaused the game and it looks like he's flashing red now. I feel so tired of everything. And now it's saying he's pale. All right, well I guess I should have kept my mouth shut about this illness progressing. Is that what this is? An illness? That's what I'm gonna call it, I guess. And yeah, I'm aware this episode's progressing pretty slowly, but since I noticed Moses flashing like this, um, you know, I don't really want to run things too quickly. I'd have to imagine at this point the other dwarves are taking note of his condition, and they're probably just as concerned as we are. Certainly couldn't blame them. In just these past few months, Moses has gone from being a secretive and most likely evil overlord to sort of a friendly old grandfather character. Yeah, I, I really wish I knew what was going on here. And before anybody goes saying that it's because he hasn't been able to drink blood, take note that none of the other vampires are having this problem. Oh, it looks like the new liaison's here. Uh, hello. My name is Lorbem Zephon Besmar. You are a new outpost liaison from the Mountain Homes. And yes, you are third outpost liaison as well. And I would very much enjoy being your last outpost liaison, if you catch my meaning. I do think you'll find that I'm a tad more sticky than those previous two. I don't intend on going anywhere. Now then, let's discuss your situation. You may remember that last year when the liaison was here, he was up in our library kind of having a depressive panic attack, and he wouldn't go immediately meet with that tier. Well, after the merchants left, that um progressed a little bit, and he eventually ended up entering a catatonic state, and he just stood in our library for a while, not eating or drinking or anything, and eventually he died. And we had to drag his corpse out to the woods here. Yeah, not too sure uh, what the deal with that was. Probably some serious personal issues, I'd imagine. But anyways, looks like we got a new outpost liaison out of the deal. And some such. And I do also have some news to share. Okay, cool. Looks like we have some more news. Always good. And down here. And we'll also need to know what requests you have of the merchants for next year. And then just the usual merchant tedium. Well, Amas de Sashas. 
you seem a noble dwarf and this meeting went much better than expected, and I find myself looking forward greatly to our meeting next year. But remember, our fortunes rise and fall together. Farewell. Ah, wonderful. Well, it's certainly good to see the merchants arrive two years in a row. Really hoping this keeps up. Mm, checking on Moses again, and it looks like he's heading up into the Tower of Memories currently. Slowly. And it says he's on his way to attend a meeting, which seems a bit strange. I feel angry all the time. Right, he's uh, up here in the Tower of Memories now. Doing what, I could not begin to tell you. And now he's just heading back down. Although it still says he's going to attend a meeting. Still flashing red, and it still says he's pale, too. I mean, that definitely seems strange. I'm not sure where he thinks he's going right now. Just kind of wandering aimlessly through the fortress. Perhaps he's beginning to lose his mind a bit? Is what we can go with. I sure as hell don't have any other better explanation. Can't help but wonder what Atir thinks of all this. I'm sure she's aware that he's fallen ill. I mean, how could she not be? Be merry. Wow, go figure. It looks like she's actually in pretty high spirits. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Hold up. Hold up a goddamn second. Alright, everyone. It would appear that right after we last left off with Moses, he collapsed in this hallway here and died. Just like that. For what reason, I could not begin to tell you. I have no idea what was wrong with him. And I really, truly wish I did. Wow, um... <laughs> I don't I I don't know what to say. It looks like the poor bastard was taken by some sort of a strange wasting disease. <sighs> yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm at a complete loss really. Moses Tzashragoff, former benefactor of Statarguskash, died in the year 294, smack dab in the middle of the autumn festival. Ugh, we don't have time for this. We have some new migrants here, a pair of dwarves, and we'll have to try to keep an eye on them, I guess. Anyways, back down here, yeah, uh, Moses died, taken by a strange wasting illness that caused him to fall here in this unremarkable brownstone hallway. Huh. <sighs> well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna cancel the Autumn Festival a little early. I'm sure the dwarves no longer feel like celebrating anyways. And as for what we're going to do with his body here, well, unfortunately because he's not an actual citizen, we can't inter him in our tomb. It won't allow us to, but we wouldn't want to put him there anyways. Far too unremarkable. Instead, you know, I was thinking we should make this room here into a tomb. It was intended to be Moses' throne room, and even though he had turned it down in life, I think the dwarves, for the most part, would insist that he is interred here. And seeing as how we can't put him in a coffin, I am coming up with a different idea. That should be done fairly soon. We'll get back to that in a moment. You know, I really wish I could say something more profound about Moses here. You know, like, it would have been nice if he were to die in some eventful way, protecting the fortress or, I don't know, something. But I guess that's just how things work sometimes, huh? He's gone, and there's nothing we can do about it now. Although that being said, it does create a sort of an interesting dynamic here in the fortress. You gotta think, pretty much the entire time the fortress has been around, the dwarves haven't known exactly what to think of Moses. Very secretive, possibly evil. I mean, sure he did some nice things for the dwarves, but well, we hardly ever saw the guy in the 20 years before he arrived here in the fortress for a permanent stay. But when he did finally show up, he seemed like a very genuine fellow to the dwarves. Kind, even. And so to the dwarves, all it seems like he's ever done for the fortress is help it, pretty much. From its founding until now. <laughs> uh, side note here, I just noticed Domas was heading to sleep right here in this little dormitory. And... Just as soon as he got into bed, this stampede of vampires came flooding down the stairs. Oh my god, that was close. Like, super close. Damn. We'll just lock up this door. There we go. Alright, anyways, back to Moses. The dwarves have now had a chance to see that he seems like a very genuine fellow. And because of that, I'm thinking they trust his motives. I mean, really, if you think about it, the dwarves are in a dire situation. And becoming vampires isn't the best option, certainly. But if it helps him survive, then... Yeah, it's a damn fine idea. Moses' idea. And I'm thinking the dwarves are going to want to honor him by making damn sure his plans do not fail, even after his death. Was he actually just trying to do a great service for the dwarves? Or was he on some sort of a massive power trip, trying to become a vampire king? At this point, I'm not going to even claim to know what he was thinking. But it does make you wonder. Oh, here one second. Looks like it is trying to go to sleep. Let's uh, just watch here. All right, he's sleeping. And oh, oh no. You see all those vampires? 
Oh boy, I paused that right in time. Damn. As soon as the dwarf goes to sleep, they all just drop what they're doing and run straight for the sleeping dwarf. Damn, that's kind of amazing. Anyways, we'll lock that door. <laughs> Back to the current state of the fortress. So what we have now is a fortress filled with vampires who greatly revere their now deceased benefactor, and who for the most part seem to wholeheartedly agree with his ideas for the future of the fortress. They wanted to become vampires, and see it as the only way to defeat the goblins, and carve a place out for themselves in this world. Now I had said they agree for the most part because not all of them do. Mainly Atir, the current Baroness of Honeystoker, and a dwarf who I imagine is fairly disgusted with the current state of the fortress, and the vampiric direction it's taking, and also a dwarf who does not like any leaders whatsoever. Remember she would much prefer to see all leaders toppled, and yet it is now her job to lead this fortress. And you know, I think she's going to do a damn fine job at it. Just because she doesn't like leaders doesn't mean she cannot lead. And as reluctant as she might be, it is now her job to lead this fortress, and to create a place for the vampires here. And seeing as how there's really no point in resisting the vampirism anymore, because nearly all the dwarves in the fortress are now vampires, Atir is going to use what she has here to create a new place for the dwarves. Vampires or not, she is still their leader. And considering the fact that she is now compelled to follow Moses' vision, and remembering the fact that we should now expect a new wave of migrants to start arriving, I think the time is swiftly approaching where we can actually start warring against the goblins. Which is terribly thrilling. Yes, with the death of Moses, I think Honeystoker is going to enter a new era. A dark era. Of blood, vampires, and glory. And hopefully, at this era's end, the vampires of Honeystoker will have proven themselves capable of surviving in the Eternal Realms. Well, you bearded bastards, as always, I truly hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and I certainly hope to see you next time, here in Statargus Guy, Honeystoker, where a new age is just beginning. But until next time.